Okay, graphs without equations, problem number two. Let's look at what we've got here. We always need to identify what this graph is. In the previous problem, it was the graph of the original function. In this problem, it says the figure above shows the graph of f prime. And they were even nice to us, and they labeled it already. So we should be thinking, making sure that we keep this in the back of our mind, that we are looking at the graph of the derivative. Okay, so that's detail number one. It does tell us that it's twice differentiable. So that's good. That means we can take the derivative everywhere uh, that's shown on the interval from 0 to 8. It does tell us that there are horizontal tangent lines at 1, 3, and 5. Uh, so that means horizontal tangent lines, that should be making you think uh, maxes and mins. But that's maxes and mins of f prime. So maxes and mins on f prime make us think of uh, uh, zeros, uh, f double prime equals zero, which should make us think uh, points of inflection. So I don't know if we're going to need that, but if they mentioned it, usually we do. All right, they give us the areas. They even label them. Now one detail that I'm going to add to the graph is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to put a negative. Uh, that doesn't look like a negative. I'm going to put a negative in front of that 3 because that area is below the axis. So I want to make sure that I don't forget about that. Uh, and then it also tells us that f of 8 equals 4. So it's an initial condition, but keep in mind, it's, it's not really initial. We tend to think of initial as our starting point. That's technically our ending point. That's where we're going to end up, um, is at a y value of 4 at the end of this interval. So keep that in mind as well. They like to throw a little twist in there like that. Okay, find all values of x on the open interval for which the function f has a local minimum. Justify your answer. So this should be pretty easy. Uh, we're thinking f has a local minimum where f prime changes from negative to positive. So where does f prime change from negative to positive? The only place where that happens is right here, and that is at 6. So you would say um, f has a local minimum. at x equals 6 because that is where f prime changes from negative to positive. Now, if you want to add to that, that, that also means that f would change from decreasing to increasing, therefore creating a minimum. You can, but you really, really don't have to. Okay. Um, so really, that that's it. It's a one-point part answer with justification. So you can't just say x equals 6, and you have to have the correct justification, and that's because that's where f prime changes from negative to positive. Okay, but just one point there. All right. Part B, determine the absolute minimum. Absolutely, seriously, guys, we've got to remember when it says absolute, we should always be thinking critical points and what? End points. Okay, you've got to remember those end points because that's usually where they're going to get you. Okay, so determine the absolute minimum value of F on the closed interval from 0 to 8, justify your answer. So we already know where the local minimum occurs. It occurs at 6, but we also, we got to check our endpoints, okay? So we're going to have to find, we're going to have to find f of 0. We are going to have to find f of 6, our local minimum, and we're going to have to find f of 8. Well, we already know that. They gave us that. That was 4, okay? Now, let's figure out these other ones. We're going to have to work backwards, okay? We know that at 8, 
the y value is 4. So let's use our areas and work backwards. If we're at 4 and we added 7 units right here, then we must have been at negative 3. At 6. Okay. And let's keep working backwards. If we were at negative 3, but we subtracted 3 right before that, that must have mean, meant we were at negative 6. No, 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 sorry. Okay, I'm going backwards here. So, okay, we're at negative 3 right here. We're at 4 right here. We're at negative 3. So we subtracted the 7. If we subtract negative 3 from negative 3, we get 0. There we go. If we subtract 6 from 0, we get negative 6. Because remember, we're going backwards. We've got to subtract these things. And then if we subtract 2 from that, we end up at negative 8. So f of 0 is negative 8. So which one's the absolute least? That would be right there. Um, so you get one point for considering x equals 0, or excuse me, f of, yes, x equals 0 and x equals 6. If you just identify those as candidates, you get a point. Okay, so your answer is uh, the absolute minimum value is negative 8. You get one point for that. And you get one point for your justification. So for your values right here, your negative 8, your negative 3, and your 4, that's your justification. Now, if you look at the rubric, the answer key there, you'll see that they've got some integrals. It probably wouldn't hurt to put that integral in your answer. Um, I just kind of worked through it visually looking at the graph and, you know, remembering the area under the curve is our accumulation and whatnot. Um, but I don't know that you have to have the integrals there. Uh, I don't know enough about the grading to know whether you use the point there for the justification or not. Okay, part C. On what open intervals contained in 0 to 8 is the graph of F both concave down and increasing? Okay, so concave down we're looking at the derivative so we got to think about this concave down if we're looking at the derivative isn't that where the derivative is decreasing okay and where f is increasing that's where the derivative is positive so let's go back and look at our graph where the derivative is positive and it's decreasing so we are decreasing and positive here we are decreasing and positive here and that's it. So from 0 to 1 and 3 to 4. 0 to 1 and 3 to 4 because f prime is both positive and decreasing on those intervals. So you get one point for your answer, and you get one point for your explanation. Make sure that your explanation, I know that I wrote it up here in the question stem, but make sure that your explanation actually makes it into your sentence. There's nothing wrong with writing it up here below the question. Now, on the AP exam, they won't have A, B, C, and D this close to each other. They'll have them spaced out, like they'll have A, and you'll have your space to work. They'll have B, and your space to work. Um, so your your Anything that you write right below the question uh, will be closer to your answer, but you still have to make sure that you include it in your answer. Okay, let's look at D. The function G is defined by G of X is equal to F of X cubed. If F of 3 equals negative 5 over 2, find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of G at X equals 3. Okay, so slope of the tangent line to the graph. That's easy, right? Slope of the tangent line means derivative. So g prime is equal to 3f, that f looks really weird, 
because there was supposed to be a parenthesis. 3 f of x squared, right? But this is where most people are going to mess up. They're going to forget times f prime of x. You get two points for that. You get two points just for taking the derivative of g. So they want to know it at 3. g prime of 3 is equal to plug in 3. Okay, so they tell us f of 3. They gave that to us in the question. f of 3 equals negative 5 over 2. f prime of 3, we're looking at f prime. So we need to get that from the graph. f prime of 3 is 4. Oh, and looky there how they set up this problem. When you square negative 5 over 2, that gives you 25 over 4. And they even gave you a 4 to cancel with that. So it equals 75. You get two points for your derivative, one point for your answer.